Hello there, this is an Algebra 2 video. It is Chapter 10, Section 1, and today we're going to be talking about sequences, and in particular, sequences as functions. A sequence is a function in which the domain, or the input, consists of natural numbers, and if you remember, natural numbers are counting numbers, so they don't include any negatives, don't include fractions, and don't include um, zero. So it's basically the numbers that you would count with, one, two, three, four, five, and so on. The range of a sequence as a function consists of real numbers. So there's no imaginary numbers in the um, range of um, the function uh, of a sequence. So for example, I want to kind of show you symbolically what this means. For domain, you would have values like one, two, three, dot, 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 obviously refers to the fact that it's going to continue forever. Um, so then we get to the nth value here where this number represents the position of a term. Okay, which I will explain further as I go through the examples. Um, range would be a sub one, a sub two, a sub three. Now the one here indicates that it's basically attached to the first term, second term, third term, and so on and so forth. Um, so the range is the value of the term in the sequence. And you can have a finite sequence or you can have an infinite sequence. A finite sequence is basically that. It means that it terminates, it stops. Um, at some point. And so you have the brackets here. You can see that this finite sequence has 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and then it closes off and there's no dots to indicate that it's going to continue. Um, by contrast, in the infinite um, situation, you have the same values here, but now you have these three dots which indicate that this is going to go on forever. So the difference between finite and infinite. So as I was saying before, domain is um, the number of terms that you have there. So for this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. The domain then is one, two, three, four, five. So the domain is basically telling you the position of the term. It's in the first place, the second place, the third place, the fourteenth place, and on and on, so it goes. The range is the value that that term has. So the first term in this sequence has a value of three. The third term in this sequence has a value of nine. And so you have the range values here. Um, in the case of an infinite um, sequence, you would have domain as all natural numbers. Again, you could write one, two, three, four, five, dot, 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 or you could just write all natural numbers because it's going to go on forever. Um, and then for the range, instead of listing the numbers because you don't want to keep listing, you could list them dot, 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 but you could also list it as a, um, or describe it as a condition. So we have here the range is all y's, so we have this notation here where we have all y's such that this bar right here represents such that, and then behind the bar is your condition. And the condition in this case is that the y values are multiples of 3, starting with 3. So y greater than or equal to 3. If we had started with 9, for example, we would have put y greater than or equal to 9. Um, that's just another example of how you would um, describe an infinite sequence as opposed to a finite sequence. All right, so there are two um, basic, um, or there are two types of sequences that we want to talk about today. And the first, and we've talked about these before um, in Algebra 1, um, it's been a while, but um, you have seen this before. And the first type of sequence we're going to discuss is an arithmetic sequence. And an arithmetic sequence is a sequence where each term is determined by adding or subtracting, which is the same thing as adding a negative, a constant value to the previous term. We refer to that um, constant value as the common difference in an arithmetic sequence. And so here we have example one to give you um, some practice here. It says, determine whether each sequence is arithmetic. Well, it will be arithmetic if you can determine this constant value. And we can do that by taking um, two terms at a time, like so, and basically finding the difference between those two terms. And if the difference is always the same or constant, then this will definitely fit a um, arithmetic sequence. So we would take the um, negative 6 and subtract the previous term, which is 5, and that gives you negative 11. We do the same thing for the next two terms, and we would get, in this case, negative 17 minus negative 6. Notice the plus there becomes the minus and negative is a plus. So negative 16, 17 um, minus negative 6, also going to equal negative 11. And then lastly, we have negative 28 minus negative 17, which is also going to give us negative 11. So in this case, because you end up with this common difference of negative 11, then we can determine that this is in fact an arithmetic sequence. Yes, it is. So now we do the same thing in part B. So we take 
the first two terms, and we say 12 minus negative 4, that's going to give you 16. And then we take 28 minus 12, also going to give you 16. And then 42 minus 8 is actually not going to give you, um, sorry, not minus 8, minus 28. But that's going to give you 14. So here you have a situation where you didn't always get the same common difference. And so because of that, we will say this is not an arithmetic sequence. And that's how simple that is. So we're going to let you try this example here. And then we're going to go on to example two. In example two, it says consider the arithmetic sequence 18, 14, 10, and it goes on and on and on. So this would be an example of an infinite sequence because it's going to go on forever. Um, it's arithmetic because they're telling us it's arithmetic, which means that there must be a common difference. So the first thing we want to do in part eight is find the next four terms of the sequence. Well, we have to know what the common difference is so that we can add it to the previous terms and, and determine what the next four are. So we're going to come over here and we're going to go 14 minus 18, which is going to give us negative four. Then we're going to go 10 minus 14, which is also going to give us negative 4. And so we can determine that the common difference is negative 4. So what I need to do is add negative 4 to each, um, to my previous term, and do that four times. So my last term that I left off on in this sequence was 10. So we're going to go ahead and put 10 here as our starting number. And then we want to add negative 4 to that, and we're going to get 6. Then we're going to add negative 4 to that, and we're going to get 2. Then we're going to add negative 4 to that, and we're going to get negative 2. Then we're going to add negative 4 to that. I think we did it one time, two times, this is our last time, and we're going to get negative 6. And my pen just kind of died on me there, but we'll, it'll come back in a, in a second. Alrighty, negative 6. So, we have here that the next four terms are, after we add negative 4 one time, we got 6. We add negative 4 again, we got 2. Added negative 4 again, we got negative 2. And then added negative 4 our last time, we got negative 6. So the next uh, terms of the sequence are 6, 2, negative 2, and negative 6. And then in part B, it says graph the first seven terms of the sequence. So we have basically these three combined with the four we just figured out, and that's seven terms. So we're going to graph this, and I have my grid here ready, and we've got, um, remember that the domain here, the x value, is going to be um, the number of terms. So there's only seven terms, so we're going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the first term, which would be x equal to one, the first term is 18, so we put our dot there. Our second term is 14. And we're going by twos here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 is going to be right about here. And then we got our third term is 10, right about here. And then our fourth term is 6. And then our fifth term is 2. And then our sixth term is negative 2, down here in the negative. And then our uh, seventh term is negative 6, and we have negative 6 down here, so right about there. And then you want to connect, um, well actually you don't want to connect your, your dots, but you can basically see that in the case of an arithmetic sequence, your graph is going to look very linear. Okay, and we'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to geometric sequences. But your arithmetic sequences will look very linear, which is going to help us um, in our next um, example. So. You'll do this do-it-yourself question, and then our last um, example with arithmetic sequences, our next um, example will, will be geometric sequences, is here we go. During their routine, a high school marching band marches in rows. There is one performer in the first row, so we can go ahead and get our sequence going here. There is one performer in the first row, three performers in the next row, and five in the third row. This pattern continues for the rest of the rows. 
And it says, suppose the director wants to determine how many performers will be in the 14th row during the, the routine. So first of all, this is the range. This is the actual value. This is how many performers are actually in each row. But the actual rows are the domain. So I'm going to go ahead and go here, first row, second row, third row, blah, blah, blah. And we want to go all the way down to the 14th row. OK, remember, this is our input. This is our domain. These are the x values. And these are our y values. It's basically how many performers are in each row. What you can actually do, because we know that um, arithmetic sequences are very linear, then we can actually use um, the equation of a line to determine um, an equation that will help us find the 14th row. So what we know is that when um, x is 2, y is 3, or when x is 3, y is 5, so either way you can say um, 3, 5, um, you can tell from here, from the um, values, that they're increasing by 2 every time. And that's basically your slope. But even if you didn't recognize it right away from the graph, we know that when we have um, th the third row, you have five performers. And in the second row, you have three performers from the data that they're giving us. And from that, you can actually calculate the slope by going y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and you would get 3 minus 5 is negative 2 over 2 minus 3, which is negative 1, which is still positive 2. So either way, the slope is 2. And then we can use our equation y minus y1, and I'm going to go ahead and use x1, y1. So y minus y1 equals my slope times x minus x1, and this will give me an equation 2x minus 6, we're going to add the 5 to the other side. So y equals 2x, negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. 2x minus 1 is an equation that will basically tell me um, what the number of performers is in any given row. So now, since I want to know the 14th row, I'm going to replace x with 14. So y equals 2 times 14. minus 1. All right, so 2 times 14 is going to be 28, minus 1 is 27. So you will have 27 performers in the 14th row. And that is how we can use um, linear equations to um, predict or to, to find out how many um, or what the next term in the sequence is going to be. All right, so now we want you to do the same thing here. And then we're going to go to, as I promised, geometric sequences. Now, geometric sequence, again, we've also done um, in Algebra 1 and in geometry. A geometric sequence is where each term is determined by not adding or subtracting, but multiplying or dividing. Because, again, dividing is the same thing as multiplying by reciprocal. Um, a non-zero constant, again, the word constant, by the previous term. And we refer to this constant as the common ratio. So in the case of a common ratio, um, you are multiplying and or dividing that ratio by each previous term. So in example four, it says, we want to determine whether each sequence is geometric. To do that, we're trying to do pretty much the same thing we did with the arithmetic situation, only this time we're going to be dividing. We're going to take the six and divide it by the negative 2, which gives us negative 3. Then we're going to take the negative 18 and divide it by the 6, which also gives us negative 3. And then 54 divided by negative 18, which also gives us negative 3. And so again, because now we have a common ratio, we say that this is definitely a geometric sequence. Alrighty, we'll do the same thing for part B. We're going to take and go 16 divided by 8, which is 2, and then we're going to go 24 divided by 16, which we know is not 2. It's actually um, 3 halves. And at that point, there's no point in going on any further, but I'm going to just for the sake of uh, completing here, 
Um, once you get a different value, then it's not going to have the constant value, and therefore it won't be a common ratio. But just to make sure and confirm, 32 divided by 24 is 4 thirds. But again, even if both of these had been 2 and this one wasn't, it wouldn't have worked. All of the values have to have the same um, common ratio, and they don't. So in this case, this is not a geometric sequence. All right, so now we want you to go ahead and try this do-it-yourself question, and then we're going to go to example five. And example five looks a lot like example um, two, where we were asked to find the next terms in the sequence and also graph it. So we're going to do that. Now remember that in example two, the, because it was an arithmetic sequence, our graph looked very linear. Uh, we're going to uh, see what our graph is going to look like here. Um, but first, let's find the next three terms of the sequence. So you want to come over here and take 8 divided by 32, and that's going to give you 1 fourth. And then 2 divided by 8, which is also going to give you 1 fourth. So it turns out that our common ratio is 1 fourth. So we want to get started with, with the value that we left off with, which was 2, and then multiply that value by our common ratio, which is 1 fourth. And that will give us 1 half. And then we want to times that by 1 fourth, which will give us 1 eighth. And then times that by 1 fourth, which will give us 1 32nd. So this time they only wanted the next three terms. So we got the uh, times it by 1 fourth once, and that gave us the 1 half. Did it again, that gave us the 1 eighth. Did it again, that gave us the 1 over 32. Um, obviously this is 0.5, 1 eighth is 0.125. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I want you to see, to be able to graph um, later. 0, 3, 1, 2, 5. Really small values here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and graph the first six terms of the sequence. And like before, um, the x-axis is the number of terms. So this time we're only going to graph six terms. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Um, the first term is 32. So here at 1, we're going to go all the way up at 32. And then the second term is 8. So 2, 4, 6, 8. And then the third term is 2. And then we have the fourth term is going to be 1 half. And then we're going to have the fifth term is going to be 0.125. And we're just getting closer and closer to the x-axis. And what you're supposed to see here, if I can graph this, is that a geometric sequence is very exponential, all right? Um, while the graph of an arithmetic sequence is linear, the graph of a geometric sequence is exponential, and you can even represent it um, by f of x equals r to the x power. Um, so just a couple of, um, of things that I wanted you to recognize between the difference between an arithmetic and a geometric sequence when it comes to what their graphs look like. All right, so here we want you to try this guy on your own, and then we're going to go to our last example for today, and it's going to involve us classifying between arithmetic and geometric uh, sequences. So it says here, determine whether each sequence is arithmetic, geometric, or neither. Explain your reasoning. Well, um, all the reasoning that we need is basically to determine whether or not it has a common ratio or a common difference. And if it has neither of those, well, then we don't have um, either type of sequence. So. Here we go. I'm going to start by trying to do a um, arithmetic. So we're going to go 24 minus 16. And that's going to give us 8. And then I'm going to go 36 minus 24. And that's going to give me 12. And you see, I can already tell that it's not going to be an arithmetic sequence because I got 8 and 12. So I don't even have to keep going. I can just leave it at that. So I'm not going to have an arithmetic sequence here. So I'm going to abandon this. But I am going to go on to the next one and try an arithmetic here. So I'm going to go 4 minus 1, which is 3. 
9 minus 4, which is 5, and again, I see that there is um, not the same constant value, so again, I'm going to abandon it here. This is not going to be arithmetic either. I come over here to the same thing, 17 minus 23 is going to give us negative 6. 11 minus 17 is also going to give us negative 6. And then lastly, 5 minus 11, also giving us negative 6. So in part C, we can determine already that this one's going to be arithmetic. And if it's arithmetic, it can't be geometric, and it can't be neither. So that's arithmetic. Now I'm going to go back to my other two, and I'm going to try to see if I can get a geometric sequence out of one of them. So I'm going to get 24 and divide it by 16 this time, which is going to give me 3 halves, if my pen will come back. Oops, that looks pretty ugly. All right, then I'm going to take, so that was 24 divided by 16, I'm going to take 36 divided by 24. And that's also going to give me three halves, so so far so good. And then I'm going to take 54 and divide it by 36. 54 divided by 36 is also going to give me three halves. And so since they all have a common ratio of three halves, this guy is geometric. And that's your reasoning. It's geometric because it has a common ratio. It's arithmetic because it has a common difference. Over here, I'm going to try um, just to see if this one's going to be um, geometric as well. So I'll take 4 divided by 1, which is 4, and then 9 divided by 4, which is not going to equal 4. Um, 4 goes into 9 twice and then has a remainder of 1. So you're not going to get a common ratio either. So we abandon the common ratio idea, and in this case, Part B is neither. It is neither arithmetic nor is it geometric. Alrighty, so we'll let you do this last do-it-yourself question and once you have completed this do-it-yourself question you will have completed your notes for this lesson and I will see you in class and thanks for watching.